Hey everybody, good morning. It's a good Sunday morning. So we're going to try something a little bit different today. And I know it's a little early, but I've got a bunch of painting to do this afternoon, but house painting <laughs> on the walls. So I'm going to get this done a little bit earlier today. And I'm trying a little experiment this, uh, this morning. I'm going to be trying to paint on paper that I gessoed with a um, gesso, a Holbein gesso, a gray gesso, and some marble dust. And so let's go right to the tabletop and show you what I'm talking about. So what I had is I have this gesso, and this gesso is, um, Holbein makes a bunch of gesso that that is in different colors. They have, I don't know how many different colors they have, but they have a huge amount of colors for gesso. And though it's not, it's not really for watercolorist and because it doesn't absorb like, um, regular, um, absorbent ground, they do say they have some absorbent ground, which they're sending me. And actually I'm going to get it today. <laughs> actually, unfortunately it's a little bit too early to get it, but, um, I, what I'm doing is I'm taking marble dust. Uh, it's just marble dust. I ordered on, you can get this, uh, any art store. Um, you have to look, it's, it's a little bit tough to get, but I actually, I think I got this on Amazon and I'll be putting something in the description of the video where you can actually get it. And so what did I do? I took these, I mixed them together. I used this and I put a little bit of the marble dust in there. Well, quite a bit of it actually. And then I put it on a white sheet of Stonehenge Aqua paper. So here you can see what I did is I took a regular sheet and actually, actually there's another painting in there underneath there, but I took this um, sheet of paper and I actually did it twice. Once I did it this morning or yesterday, I did it on this. And what I had done is I put it on there and this gray elephant um, is the gesso. I still didn't finish this one, but you can see if I put it close, you can see I did, I painted it first with gesso and then I put the ground over a, a stencil and so there's a stencil in this and if I look from the side a little bit you can see the paint is thicker with a stencil and again it's on a white sheet of Stonehenge aqua paper 300 pound and I'm just using this with watercolor but also then I may finish it off with gouache and so I'm just going to try something it's just an experiment I want to kind of maybe put on board and then um, have it look a little bit like in oil painting and or watercolor and gouache I want to use some thickness of the paint like this is a um, this is when I put this on that I put on with a uh, gouache like actually acrylic actually acrylic gouache I put down with because I used white acrylic gouache which I don't have this morning but I do have my gouache my watercolor gouache from Holbein and then I write their watercolors so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna be doing this scene up on the left hand corner of these two girls with a horse and I normally don't draw or don't draw horses really well for my imagination so um, if I have a picture then it's okay and if the horse is just standing still but if it's a running horse and stuff like that I can't make that up because I don't know how those legs go but uh, this morning I'll, uh, we're gonna be trying to do this in watercolor and a little bit of gouache and this is a little test for me I always like to do things on a Sunday morning that's a little test for me to kind of see how this would work I did the thing yesterday uh, I never finished it but um, in class but this time I want to see if I can't finish this and go from light to dark uh, it is a, still going to be a watercolor I started like a watercolor I didn't tape it down um, I didn't tape it down and if you can see there is a little bit of texture in this but you can't probably see that no matter how close I get um, there's texture in the paper and so but it's going to absorb because I put marble dust into the gesso where if I just use regular gesso it also has chalk they say in it but it doesn't absorb as much as when you put a little bit of marble dust in it I'm not sure if what, that's what they put for the absorbent ground but um, I've tested it yesterday and it works really well actually it absorbs like an absorbent ground just so that I know that um, Golden makes one, Daniel Smith makes one, a gesso ground, and I hear that Holbein also makes one, and they're shipping it to me. And so we're going to see how that works. But until then, I'm going to use this um, marble dust and put it into a gesso. And then I tried gray because, you know, we have black paper, we have white paper, but how about gray paper? Let's see what it works like. All right, so let's get going here. So if I start with my lightest light, and that would be the sky, right? And so I'm going to wet it. I'm going to wet it a little bit like a watercolor and I'm just going to start like a watercolor and if I got to get thicker because I'm covering up gray and this is where the white paper would normally come into account where 
you're just putting you know the color that you want for the sky right into the sky but here I'm going to be having put in white and you know depending on what color I want to put in there I'm going to maybe use white and a little bit of yellow because I don't want to make a blue sky I don't it's not really blue in the picture and there's a lot of times where like this is like either evening shot or early morning shot and so I'm just going to take a little bit of white and as you can see it's going to absorb but I got to use a lot of pigment that I wet down the water I, I, yeah, the water is wet but I wet down the paper I mean and I'm just going to put that in there with white and yellow a little white and yellow and you got to make it pretty thick because it's like if you're using black on white paper you got to put enough on it to cover up the white and here I am floating the pigment so it's going to float on top but I was absorbing a little bit into the paper and so you're kind of going reverse I'm going a little bit reverse here where I'm putting in the light when normally you have a white sheet of paper right well here um, it's kind of fun doing this is more kind of like a oil painter and acrylic painter where they put the darks in first well I'm putting in the middle tone first because that's the color of my here I'll use a little gouache white because it's a little bit more opaque the gouache white see gouache is a little bit finer more finely ground and so um, Holbein ground grinds it really finely and it doesn't use white additive to it like many of them many of many of the um, manufacturers put white whiting agents in their gouache where Holbein does more less um, really fine pigment so it covers better for the gouache I'm putting a little bit of yellow in there and just kind of letting it float it's still you know I let the pigment do its soft edging I do want to hard edge by the horse because the horse is darker and so he's already there right and so this is kind of negative painting in on a dark sheet of paper <laughs> so it's a little bit weirder that way but um and you have to watch because it does absorb because I put the um the <laughs> the marble dust in it and so it's going to absorb into the into the paint a little bit and so that's what I want though I want that to feel like it's a watercolor sheet of paper and so it will dry darker like what white watercolor paper dries lighter when you let it dry it's 20 percent lighter well this will dry 20 percent darker so you you gotta put enough pigment in there so that when it dries you make it look lighter than you want it and then it'll dry a little bit darker all right and so there i have my light sky i've got to use my smaller brush and get this little spot in here light to dark um i find i'm gonna try it i like I said, I haven't never done this except for yesterday when I did the elephant there. But, um, and I, I really love the feel of this, how it feels. And so if, if you like the feeling of it absorbing, that's what I really liked. Because it really felt like watercolor paper. And um, so there we have the sky. That's pretty easy. Now let's go to our second light. And that would be the foliage back here. And the sun is right there. So... Um, it's it's taking the sun and making it really orange. I like to call that optical scatter, which I learned from Carl Bretzky. He taught us that. And so I'm going to take that color. And again, because I'm working on not a white sheet of paper, I've got to use white to lighten like my colors or use a lot of that color that is light already. So, And this is my gouache. And so I'm going to take a little bit of orange gouache with the white. I'm going to start up here and just start putting in on top of the gray. And yes, this is not traditional. This is I'm just trying something new. I'm trying to see if this would be a good way of painting. And I, I love trying new things. Trying new things and trying to, you know, be an artist that's creative and trying to see. Because like a lot of my students always ask, well, what, do you, what can I do here? What can I do there? And um, I'm not sure. And so it's also good for me to try things so that I can explain to you what's good and what's bad in watercolor or using not watercolor paper or using board or whatever. So I really like to um, try different things. Now see how it's just blending like a watercolor? And really if you use wet into wet as your um, way of painting, even when you're using oil painting, you can use like thinner and thin down your paint to where you can act like it is watercolor even though it's uh, acrylic or oils you don't have to use your traditional ways you can try different things and you may come up with a technique that nobody else does and that it defines you as an artist 
which is what kind of what we want, right? We want to have paintings that say when you look at them, it's like, oh yeah, that's a Dave Becker or that's a so and so. And again, good morning, everybody. Hey, Pat. Hey, Darcy. You know, if you want to um, ask questions, please go ahead. I know a lot of people are probably sleeping right now, <laughs> and they'll get this later. But I need—I have a bunch of things I got to do today, and so I thought I'd get a little bit early start on this, a little jump on it, a little jump on my day. And I always try to do, you know, I, I try to paint a lot because I had a really great dream last night about um, artists in general and the fact that, you know, as artists, we, we were kind of lucky that we get to be creative. We can do their whole our whole life and, you know, anybody can do it. And I you know it is a hard, it is hard. And though the more practice you do, the easier it gets. So it, I, I really, when I see people who have really good work, I know they it took a while for the, them to get there. So I always am really proud of seeing people that do good paintings. I know it took a while to get to that point. It takes work. It's not like it just doesn't come. It comes easier for some people, but it is, I know, a lot of hard work. So now I'm doing the background. I'm kind of getting that, that light so that the light, but look at how right there, um, I'm starting to lose the light. So I'm going to take a little bit more of the white and yellow and get this really light in there because this is going to be my lightest light and and there is no white on my paper so i have to put it in and for watercolors that's a lot of times they they don't like that that's a no-no for most watercolors myself included when i went to school you are not allowed to use white and so this is what i'm doing right here is definitely a no-no that my teacher irving shapiro said no way you don't use white you use the white of the paper or use masking fluid um, but I'm changing things around a little bit. I actually like the white look where you're taking an opaque color and putting it in there. Putting it in there. So I'm kind of working in pieces like I'm not working like I normally do where I put it across everything and, and put the white on top. I'm not sure why I'm not doing it that way. It just seems like I'm thinking acrylic too. I used to do a lot of acrylic painting too. So I'm going to see, I'm going to kind of switch off here now and try to go big area. And try to put in my lights first because that's my three-step process is putting in my lights first and i'll put this in later that arm is going to be well, let's actually do that let's let's put it in like we would normally do and go through things and not go around things so here arm is light right and so it's going to be lighter than the background so if i just put a light here and then put the background on top of that i can then cut it out the shape and so the hatch should be done first before I do this background, right? Because, again, you should be doing the lights first. And, whoops, almost in my coffee. Cheers, everybody. Morning coffee. You got to have it. <laughs> and so let's put this light in into her, their dresses because that's a, a little bit lighter than anything else. And so, again, I have to do it a little bit opaquely. Is that a word? Opaquely? I'm not sure, but opaqueness. <laughs> And so it's a little bit lighter than the gray. And so I'm going to put a little bit of white and a little bit of maybe lavender. And I'm just going to go in there and try to get the dress a little bit. I can go beyond that, but if I don't need to, you know, I might as well just stick with it here a little bit in the front. Their arm right here. Again, this is also new to me. And so when I do something new, I, a lot of times I'm trying to, trying to think of how I would do it still keeping an account that I'm a watercolorist and I do my steps and everything like that but sometimes it seems like I have to go and try other things besides what I normally do so we're gonna see if this is the right way I think it is it's hard to know because again it is a new thing for me it's gonna be darker in the back here should I go through the arms because the arms are darker and then I can put that on there. So I can just go right through the arms. I should go through the arms. See, it's just so, I'm thinking, oh man, do I have to put that on there later? But because I'm using white, but if you use it opaque, if you use it with water, it does still become transparent. You're just seeing the gray through it. You can use white like, like transparent watercolor because white, when you're using it really transparently, um, you're just putting a lot of water down and you afloat the pigment on top. It's still, you can see through the white, even though it's an opaque color. 
just experimenting. I mean, it's fun. To me, um, this kind of thing is so much fun. As, we, as artists, in my dream last night, we were talking about, um, it was really weird because we were talking about how you never stop learning in watercolor or as an artist. You always try different things, different mediums. And that, that's what's so great about it. You can paint forever. And um, you're always trying new things. You're always learning new things. It's really awesome. I really love that effect about. So let's go in here and put the face. I'm just going to put some some flesh tone for the face. Getting a little bit of kind of like um, pinkish salmon-y color. And I go right through, making it transparent. It's going to gray up a little bit because, again, I'm going over a gray surface. So that takes you have to take that into account, especially when you're doing it transparently. This is transparent. I, I'm using white, but it's still transparent. Morning, Maria. Sorry for waking everybody up so early this morning, but I usually get things. I'm a, I'm a morning person. I like to get things done early in the morning. And I got to go and paint a bunch of walls in Elgin today. So I got to get going. And so I figure I might as well do this a little bit earlier than normal. I've got to make the hat. Let's make the hat the lightest light here. And you work large areas, again, light to darks. And I know I'm not going into beyond that because, I don't know, I should, but I'm kind of getting detailed. That's because I'm not used to this. I'm not used to working this way. And so I'm just searching for how I could do this the same, but all right. So let's, let's leave that alone. Let's, let's get the light, the big light foreground with the grasses and stuff. Let's get into that right now. You notice I am using a little bit of both. I am using a little bit of the gouache and you have to put a white in it if you want it lighter than the gray. See, I mean, or the pigment has to have some light in it so that it it stands lighter than the the surface that you're putting it on. Because this is transparent watercolor, so it's going to show through. So if you want to dull that down a little bit, you got to put white in there. And the color it's supposed to be. So when you're looking for um, images to paint that are, when you're doing this on gray, then I look for images that don't have a lot of white and don't have a lot of black. Because mostly I don't want it to be really light light, because if it's really light, then I've got to get back to the white of the paper. And you can use that with white paint, but I just figure if you go with something that's halfway, then you really got a nice chance of making it easier to paint. It's definitely easier doing it that way. It's just something different. Illustrators used to do this all the time. They used to, um, illustrators that like Bernie Fuchs and stuff, they would do like what oil washes and rub out and like that kind of stuff. So it was so much fun. And look at how that got a little bit darker now too. So I can maybe put another coat over it, like re-wet it and put a little bit more white into that if I want it whiter, lighter. Again, trying to put in my lights, getting them in there. And the fact that you're using a lot of white makes things a lot of pastel. It makes it very pastel-like. And so I'm going to try to not be totally that way, though. I'm going to try a little bit to get it strong colors and use strong colors, but use them thicker so that they they cover up the surface of the gray. People ask me, well, why gray? Why don't you just stick with, why don't you just put the marble dust into the white? I just want to try this. This is just, you know, uh, uh, trying it. Where the sky and the orange meet is already fascinating. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, you get some really neat effects because I also getting texture from my brushwork when I put on the when you put it on the paper. So you can, I the texture I got on the elephant is because I put it over a stencil. I put the stencil down and it's a very, you know, look at, 
Get that in focus. Come on, focus up there a little bit. You can see there's a stencil over the whole thing. Even in the gray, there's these little round stencils. And so... <clears throat> so I put that in there like that. Now there is some red in here because if you're using a lot of orange there, it's stating that the sun is really warm. So we're going to do a lot of warmth right here. And his leg is darker, so I can go right through that. And see, I keep on going around things, and I'm really not about that. I uh, really like to go through, and so you get the beautiful washes. And so one of those things I constantly teach is that don't go around. Don't go around things. Um, you want big washes so they look beautiful. I mean, that's how you make beautiful washes, is going, is going through and making them big. The easier way of doing um, washes is to do them large. And drop pigment in there and let the pigment float and all that things that I talk about floating your pigment so like when you wet the whole surface and then let it do its thing and get the texture on different ways you get texture and such you know that's what you know look at this I'm not sure if you can see that but there is a lot of line work in there because the gouache or the um, gesso I put on thick and I get the brushwork from my, my big brush that I'm putting it on. So let's get do that. Let's go right through. I have to go around here a little bit. And it does give you soft edges like paper, which is what I was looking for. That's why I put down the, the marble dust. The marble dust goes in there so that it gives it that absorb, absorb and absorbing quality. <laughs> Need some more coffee can't talk this morning <laughs> so look at all those beautiful washes you can get and then you can do this on panels too I just happen to do it on paper um, you can do it on a panel like a wood panel so there's a little bit of light coming through here let's make it go through the legs a little bit the legs are darker so I don't have to worry about that I'm gonna spatter a little bit there's a lot of foliage down here, right? This, and again, I'm not doing my darks yet. I'm going to do that in a second. But I can go in here and just get a little bit of closeness with the bit of purple. And I usually don't do this type of subject matter. This a little bit tougher for my paint alongs. I will one day I'll probably get a little bit more and more detailed and a little bit more complicated but this is um, if I do something too hard nobody ever shows up to my classes because they find it too hard to do so <laughs> I can't make them too hard for you guys um, that takes practice and that doesn't mean you can't try this though if you want to just try it um, it's in here and I can um, just draw it up from this my image this Photoshop or this thing and I, what I'll do is I make this really big for a second and then you can just stop it here there you go there's the big image and so stop the video take a picture of this and then go ahead and try it this, this picture is from one of those royalty free places so that um, people like you can do it and not have to worry about um, it being illegal to do it from somebody else's work these are photo. These are photos are all royalty free. And I get them on those sites like Pexels.com. Uh, what's the other one? Um, Unsplash.com. Pixabay.com. There's many places where you can get royalty free images. All right. So there's my light. Right, this is this is not red enough. Let's get there a little bit more orange on top of there. And there's a really dark, dark back there, which I can cover that parts up. Now let's do the horse because the horse is like goes from medium to a really dark, dark. And so, you know, one thing I noticed I don't have in here yet is more of this purple, purpley blue to kind of get that in the shadow part of the dress here. And on the horse, the horse can be that too. 
Because back here, it's a little bit of like blues, purples, dark gray. I'm amazed how much it acts like paper if you're putting that marble dust in there. I mean, I have a feeling that's, a, that's what they use. They must use that because it feels so much like that when I use. If I use it without that marble dust, the gesso, then it's too much like you get your panels, you know, your uh, oil painting panels, canvas panels. It feels like that and it really doesn't absorb it. It just sits on top. Here, it then goes into the paper. You can make a soft edge because the paper is coming, or this board now has the surface so that it absorbs a little bit. Now the face is a little bit war warmer in front here, so let's make the face a little bit warmer. But it still is dark, so I gotta remember that. It still is dark. So I gotta make it a little bit thicker. Let's make it a little bit thicker front here and make it a little bit more orange and actually it's the color actually of the a little bit of the color of the gray that I already put down so I don't have to do much here I just have to make things darker actually so let's go in there some a little bit darker darks still doing my lights though I'm actually no this is not my lights this is my medium darks that I'm putting in now my medium darks is my second step. Step two is always all the large mediums and the large dark areas. And again, this is all new to me. And so if it doesn't work out, um, it's just, just because I, it's going to work out. I mean, it's, there's no way it can. I'm just going to go over and over until I get it to work. Um, it's handling like a watercolor. I don't normally work on gray, so that's a little bit of a, a difference for me. And I'm working it and trying to feel how, how I can, you know, what do I got to do first? The lights, is it the lights, the thing that you do first? Which it normally is. And uh, the wet and the wet part works exactly. I mean, it, it really works a lot like watercolor. When I wet it and it floats the pigment, it really works well how it floats into and gives you that kind of soft look and it absorbs into the paper a little bit gives you the soft edge so that is the same now you just have to figure it out you just work it until you figure it out and i expect a lot of times when i talk to my students is to try stuff like this try yourself you know um me you, you'll come up with something maybe that is just that you'll know and then you can either pass it along or just keep it to yourself. I mean, there's a lot of artists out there who have some really cool techniques that I have no idea how they do them. You know, John Selmanin, his techniques is, he I don't think he ever tells you actually how he paints his paintings. Um, Weimer, I think, what's his name? Steve Weimer, I think. He does some great stuff, though. He tells you how he does his, um, his he uses a lot of masking fluid. I'm going in there, getting my medium darks and my darks. And while this is wet, I can get soft edges. Soft edges I always get with water, and it doesn't change even doing it this way. I wet into wet. I, I wet the surface first, and that way you're working into a wet surface, giving you soft edges. That that's why I put the mat or the marble dust in there, so that I can get the soft edges and let them let them soften themselves. And because I don't like I don't like smoothing out edges, I'm very lazy when it comes to oil painting and acrylic. I could make this like more uh, uh, acrylic and oil painting looking like, but I like this ability to be able to let the softness end up doing it itself. Like, see, I can just put this little dark right there. It's wet, so it'll just bleed out on its own, and I don't have to soften it. It just softens itself, and that I love to do. I mean, that's my favorite thing. And that's why I use the water the techniques, even when I'm doing oil or acrylic. Like when I use my acrylic wash, um, I use it like watercolor. And I'm wetting it. Here's getting a little dry, so I'm gonna put more water in there. And see if you don't put it thick enough that it just keeps on bleeding. So you gotta make sure it's thick enough so it stays in the water and bleeds only a small section of that.
Hey, Jim. Yeah, I was going to, my, my cousin has a horse ranch up in Canada, and I was going to, I visited, but I didn't get enough time to actually do a little bit more, um, I was only up there for so long, and I didn't have a chance to sit there and draw him as much as I would have liked to. Next time, next time I'm up there, I'm going to try to get up there and get do a little bit more of that. Because it's good to know subject matter, and if you really want to learn how to do certain things, learn it, learn about it. Because um, yesterday in class, we had one of my students was doing a boat, and he, he had to kind of make it up some parts of it if you want to change things on it. And so it's good to know all about the boats and what it is that makes a boat. We're here if a horse, you know, if it's running or walking or standing, the legs are all a little bit differently placed and. You know, it may not be like that in the photo, but you have to do it yourself sometimes. And that's where it's good to know your subject matter. No one love your subject matter, I always say. Here, I'm just, I'm, I'm constantly working in a wet wash, getting that. You can work for a long time while it's wet like that. And you just keep on working it, putting more color in, more pigment. And it'll, it'll just float. It'll sit there and float. And you can put little hints of even black. Look at that. I'll put a little black right here, just a hint to show like the muscles here and the muscle and how it's dark and i'm looking at the picture because i don't know the horse so well enough but if you knew the horse really well you don't even have to look up you could just do this and if you've done enough of these horses you know you know exactly how the muscles are and you know everything about the horse like you don't have to but it is it just helps that much more if you do know what you're drawing and what you're painting So I'm just going to get the darks in here. All right. And so there's my mediums. These are like my mediums. And I still like to get the softness. I don't like to do um, the hard stuff yet, the thick stuff. I want to wait for that. You know, I can put that in at the end. But right now I want to get the watercolor look. Even though I'm working pretty thick with the paint, I'm still working it into a wet wash. So... I'm getting a lot of soft edges and I'm getting it to float and a lot of it's still transparent and I want that. That's the part of watercolor I love. And so I'm going to keep on going with that. I'm not going to lose that. I will get to the part where it kind of feels more like uh, oils and stuff later when I'm getting to my details, my detail darks. All right. I think that's my big mediums. Now let's go to our big darks and that's, right now behind the horse and behind all that and so for that i really gotta go dark and so let's go really dark and so what do i pick up all my darks we got blues we got purples we got black and then um of course so we gotta put a little green in there because it feels feels green so i'll put a little bit of blue and what makes blue and this cracked gold makes me a nice green nice dark green and i will start right here and if I, have, if I have to let some of it bleed into the horse, I just wet the horse then. And if I don't want to see the side of the leg exactly where it's going, then I just let it bleed right in there too. I wet it both. Because it's not important to make it look exactly like the photo so that everything is in focus. I like to keep things out of focus sometimes so that it then you don't look over there. I'm getting a bad reflection off of there. Anyway, there we go. Put a little something underneath here. So you don't get that reflection. And go on this side. And again, you got to put it on thick enough so that it gets it dries about twenty percent um, to the gray, lighter, because this is still not black piece of paper. This is a gray sheet of paper, so it will dry. And also the rim lighting, I can put on with opaque, or now while I'm going really close to it, I can just go a little closer. And then negative paint some of this lighting. Let that bleed right into the leg. I'll look at that watermark in there again, unfortunately. So what do you do is I'm gonna plug it up with some paint. I'm just gonna take some thick paint with no water. That's gonna I have a towel on my on my thing so I can dry my brush, but he'll still have a lot of paint on my brush. And then just wipe it into the water. Put some more paint in there. And 
Here, I'll leave it a little bit closer. Make a little rim lighting there. And then make a little bit more orange up here where it's the top of there. I should make that, um, actually I don't want to see that so much, so let's make that a little bit greener. So let's get some green going again, some blue, dark blue and some Kronakon gold. Let's just go in there, make that a little bit greener. I also can make it a hard edge, but don't make it so um, contrasty. So less contrast, that makes it look softer edged, and it'll make it look like a soft edge, even though it is not exactly a soft edge. Hey Tina, you made it. Yeah, you can watch the other part. I, it's, it's there. It's always there. <laughs> And then we're going in and making this lighter up there because the horse head i want to make that a little bit lighter than it is in the photo but i still want it darker as dark because i want this rim lighting that rim lighting is very important especially when it looks look at the little hairs on his nose that is really cool and so i'm going to make that with white paint or i can just negative paint them right here go around the arm don't worry about the, the harness or the um, rain because that I can put in, that's dark, it's black. And so I can put that in later. Here it's wet in the wet. Look at how nice that looks. And even though it's up um, on gessoed, look at how neat the soft edges look and how the, it just floats. Love that, love that, love that look. I've always loved uh, Bristol board too for that reason, Bristol board is it sits on top a little bit more than normal you know these paints sit a little bit more on top of the board but it absorbs a little bit and that's all i want though i just want a little bit now look at how it this got lighter see how light that got so again not enough pigment not thick enough but we can always make it darker but then i you know i always like to get things in the first wash now this area is really dark over here and i have to negative paint so i got to be a little bit more careful because i am painting two things i'm painting the background and the little girl girls at once so i'm gonna take my smaller round brush now get in there a little bit more detail only because i i don't want to go i'm not that loose in that area so i want it to be a little bit tighter with getting around the face especially their face because it's really important that i make them look really cute and so let me just get in here and I don't want to give them too big a nose and that's how important this part is because I, i'm going in there now and getting detail so this is like where i say sometimes step two and step three come together as one because i i mean i'm doing a big area but i'm also doing her face at the same time so make that nice and dark let that bleed in there Yeah, yeah, um, John Selman's art definitely, um, I would love to know sometimes how he gets, how he, I watched it, if you watch, uh, he did a demonstration for AWS this year, it's online at AWS, American Walker Society com. you can watch it, and I learned a bunch of things from it too, but he never really shows exactly how he does some of his, like, really fine detailed stuff, you know, he says he uses, he, said, he tells you kind of how he does it, but he never actually shows it, it's, it's gotta be a, pretty complicated way of painting so there I got her face hat and her hand all in one wash when I did the dark I also got all that other stuff in there right away see how that works it's just it's all together it's, it's all together in one so a lot of times that's called negative painting you're doing more than one thing though you are just doing one thing you're just painting around the subject matter and you're painting a light part and a dark part at the same time. Like right here, I'm painting her arm and I'm painting the background at the exact same time. And that's negative painting. It's a tougher thing to do. Yes, it's hard to teach too. That's coming, you wanna take Linda Kemp for that. She does a great job with teaching that. Who's also a Holbein artist, uses Holbein paints. Let's do this, lady, this little girl's face now. Be careful. I mean, it's very important. You know, don't brush that part. 
And if you don't have it drawn on well and you don't, can't see it, stop and redraw it. If you went over and you kind of can't see it, always drawing is number one. So you got to get the drawing right first before you go on. And this is too, it's too detailed for way in the distance. I'm just going to mess it up with my finger, tap on there a little bit. And I'll go over here. And this is really, a lot of this is burning with the yellows and the oranges. So um, stick with that up there make that happen i'm gonna go with pure orange now and put some pure orange right next to the white so it really looks like it's burning it's burning that um into even though these trees are not yellow and orange but the sun is so bright right there it's burning it into the into the leaves in the area you can make it even you can make it kind of reddish put some red in there i like that about this picture is that that you see have that look of really bright bright sunlight and I don't actually have it well enough done I don't have enough bright color in there it takes practice all this stuff takes practice and you gotta just don't assume that just because it looks you know the looks, looks easy or if it doesn't look easy but that it's easy it's I've done thousands of paintings I think to myself man how many paintings I've done and still to this day, there's things that are harder and, and a little bit difficult compared to other things. And so, you know, practice, 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 practice. It really is the way to get good is just practice. I've, I've proven it time again with some of my students who really have been working hard to get their, their abilities more into tact. And boy, they doing a great job. They just, and they all say, uh, what does it take? It takes a lot of practice. Just keep on doing it because you make mistakes and you learn from your mistakes and you just keep on going. You may have a lot of bad paintings, but boy, each one is going to get better and better as you go on. Hey, Sonia. Hey, Tina. Sue. So there's my light. I still want this to be kind of soft edge. So what I'm doing is I'm wetting it after I put it down like that. So it gives me soft edges. This should be a little bit more orange too, so that it has that look. So while it's wet, you can always float the on top of the water. You can always float some more other colors into that. So this is darker over here. And at the same time, I'm gonna make her dress look really nice and vibrant by making it darker right here. It gets really dark over here. Now I'm going to take my bigger brush because we're in a bigger area. I was really looking forward to doing this painting. So, I mean, I, I it's neat that as artists, I mean, we, I, we really, it's a lot of fun painting. You know, it's a, I can't believe how many paintings I've done and it has never, never gotten boring. I've always just, you know, when I ask people, you know, or I tell people that if you want to learn how to paint, as long as you have the will and you want the want, do you want to do it? Because if you don't have that, then it's going to be kind of hard because there is times where it gets tough. But, man, the rewards, each time you do a painting, it's just, it's, it's just so neat to see it finished. You know, and sometimes there are disasters. There's a lot of disasters. But, boy, when you do a good one. I was really looking forward to this because it's different. I, I wanted to see what it was like to do it on a gray paper. And so far, I really like it. I think it's kind of fun. It gives me the feel of both acrylic and oil and watercolor all in one. To me, this just feels like it's all together. Because I'm getting thicker and thicker as I go along. And now let's bring this dark along the side here. And I'm using both. I'm using my watercolors and my gouache at the same time because they really, this is a little bit more opaque and this stuff is opaque depending on if you use it thicker. And so, but it doesn't, this doesn't, the watercolors don't cover up the gray as much as the, the gouache does. The gouache really covers up well because it's made for that. It's made to cover up. It's made to be opaque. It's opaque watercolor. And the other one's transparent watercolor, so it's more transparent. It's just obvious, but um, 
when you're working, it's just, you don't think of it that way. I'm thinking of it as just like watercolor. And if I'm using it really thick, then I know if I'm using that, it's going to cover more. Now their legs are the darkest, so I'm going to go right in here now and just wet this whole bottom surface to get the, the beautiful wash of, of darks down here. And I'm going to use my paper as my palette. I'm not going to put it in here. I'm just going to go in here and use it and get some edging, some rough edges. And I didn't wet it first because I don't want it all soft edged. Some of it I want hard edged. I'm just going to, and though once it gets wet, then I can float other pigment in there, right? I can go put it on the top. I can just kind of tap it and get some hard edges here. And like right, their legs are in the light areas, so I'm just going to put that right in there too. And you notice me, once it's wet, then I put other all kinds of colors in there. I'll put a little red in there and float enough of it. It doesn't matter what medium you're working in. You can do this in any medium. You can do this in acrylic, oils. You can work thick and you can work thin. Even um, you can do a uh, transparent oil painting and just by thinning down your paint, you know, it's all possible. Okay. Purple, I always find that purple and violet or purple and green make great combination for outdoor, outdoor um, scenes and stuff. They really look cool. And I'm gonna take my big brush and watch this. I'm just gonna kind of tap to make grasses because it's pointy and it's like thin. So it'll make some great, great looking wild flowers and grasses. And see how if I do them on the side, it makes it look like stems of something. Here I can scumble a little bit. Scumble being I'm just dry brushing it kind of. I don't want to see the bottom of the hoofs of the of the horse. Same thing up here. I'm gonna make that a little bit more dry brushed. And it may it, it I'm not doing it really dark dark, so it kind of blends in together with the hoof of the horse. And then on top of that, I like that oh, that it does have a lot of this orange like flower plant back here. So I'll take a little bit more opaque colors and just kind of plop them in there. Put them down there. I love spattering. You know, that's one of my favorites. Love, love, love doing that. You know, there's so many different ways of painting watercolor. It's just, it's phenomenal how many ways you can paint it on different surfaces. And now, especially because you have all kinds of different surfaces too that all these manufacturers sell. Little dots of like, spatter are in the sky, which I'll go over again too. All right, I think we're in our big areas of mediums and darks. We got those done, right? And so now let's go into our detail. Step, step three, we're in a finishing round here. And so we're gonna, step three is to get the dark details. And so one of the details of the dark is her legs and they're in shadow. I will make them orangey red, nice and dark. I'm just getting the, trying to get the, go right into the ground here. You don't have to show the feet. Just take a dark first and wet it and then apply your warmth color in it after it's wet. You can apply it on the side over the sun is on the sides. You can just do that too. See, this is wet, but see how you can just thicker the paint. Thicker the paint, the more it stays where it's going to be staying. That didn't make so much sense. <laughs> it's staying where it's staying. <laughs> All right, there's the legs. And the legs kind of go together almost here. Nice flowers there, little wildflowers. In the photo, the reins are just hanging there and I'm not sure who's holding it, but I made it so that her arm is there and holding the rein instead of, I don't know how it is in the picture, who's holding it. Because the hand is up here and down here, but the reins are going here somewhere, so I'm not sure. Maybe there's a post there that's 
connected to. I have her hold it though. A little girl's holding it. And I can put a little bit of dark right here just to get the front of the dress to be shown a little bit more. Any questions? Remember, ask questions. I'm here for you guys. Here to teach you, hopefully give you new ideas. Trying new things. Again, for anybody that later, I, I am working on gray paper that I gessoed um, with a gesso um, and I mixed uh, um, marble dust into that just to get a kind of a different feel and absorption to the, instead of using absorbent ground gesso, which you can buy from like um, all these companies, but I want to kind of make my own gesso. I already had gesso and I'm thinking, okay, I can just Put a little bit of this marble dust into it because I think that's what they use anyways. There's one arm. Now while it's wet, always think, you know, while you're doing the one thing, this detail, like this arm right here, once it's wet, look to see like what you have to do to the, to finish it. Like don't think they have to go and go back in. So the arm looks a little bit lighter over here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more light in the front part right here. And the top part is a little bit lighter than this side. Then maybe a little bit darker underneath. Maybe here. Maybe here a little bit darker. And it can be really dark if you're just... See, you place it in there. Then I'm going to just let it float. It's wet, so it's going to float. It's going to give me my own soft edges. I don't have to I don't have to blend it. It's just going to soften itself. Then her whole hand is a little bit darker than... And then we'll put the reins in there too. There's her thumb. All right, now this hand is very, very light. So let's do a little more red in there. Same thing with their face and stuff. It's a little bit darker than I have here at first, but first let me get this hand going. And then her face gets a little bit darker, top of her hat. And knowing what a face is like, the front of the face would be a little bit lighter. So that's another thing. If you're if you're used to doing a lot of portraiture, you know what's light and dark to form the face, and you don't have to follow exactly what you see. You just know what it's going to work. And here, then the hair is dark. Her hair is dark, and so let's just put the hair coming down her back here a little bit. And she has a little bit of hair coming by your eye. And now this is wet, so make sure you get it really thick so it doesn't bleed all over the place. The thicker the pigment, the less it's going to bleed. And there we go, a little, thick, or a little shadow there. And this is going to take a little bit longer than normal because there's a lot of detail in here. So, you know, it's going to take you a little bit longer. And don't worry about timing. You know, you don't have to worry about it. I have to worry about it only because I want to make this an hour long, which I'm not sure it is an hour long yet. <laughs> Almost. Um, but you can take all the time you want. There's no, you know, stopwatch. You have, don't have to get done at a certain time. Time, to me, I always tell other student, does not matter for your quality of your painting. I used to have a, a student that worked one painting every semester and... Um, he would do the most amazing paintings, but it would take him forever to do them. He was just slow. He was just a slower painter. It was very mani 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 very tight. <laughs> very tight painter. And um, did beautiful stuff, though. And so it took him longer. He would still do the washes and all the technique that I'm teaching would do it the same way, but it just took him longer to do it. So don't worry about timing. That really I don't care about. Underneath her chin is a little bit warm. The warmth underneath the chin is really neat. Now I am picking up a little bit of this texture from the from the paper that I made, and because it's got brushwork in it, but I actually even like that. It looks it looks very artsy. Let's give her some reddish cheeks. There's her ear. Let's have her nose is a little bit darker. Got a little 
bit too dark, but see, the nice thing is with this, I can wipe out. So I'm just going to wipe out these little areas. Some horses are trained not to move when the reins are dropped on the ground. Oh, okay. Cool. Boy, I learn something new from you guys all the time. <laughs> Your paint today has a sparkle and a host of new ideas. Thank you. Oh, no, no problem. Soften this up here. You don't need to have that too detailed back here. It's a little bit too detailed. This would make a really good large painting too. Um, I could do it larger. I'm not sure. I could, again, horses are not my biggest thing. I've always had a hard time with them, but I'm trying to learn about them a little bit more. So um, that's why I kind of chose this one. I just love the picture. I mean, the picture was just amazing. There's the arm. Now, see how their dresses are a little bit too light? They're, they're, the shadow is not, they're not pushed back. So I can still do that though. I can still go back in. And her hat is not white. It is a orange kind of look. And so we're gonna get the top of it orange. And then it does have a band that's lighter. So I negative paint that in there as a little band across it. And then we'll go down to a darker color. And so I'm just picking the darks in my palette that are already there. I'm just going to go in here then and make it dark at the back. Detail, also, learning about detail is not a big thing. I, I mean, it's pretty much, you see the picture and you draw it. And so it's not hard to learn detail. It just takes time to do, de do, de do detail. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to do it. Because it's just a lot of, you know, slowing down and working it now here this this girl has a little bit of a bluish purple band on her hat so i'll put that in there and then i'm going to go in and start giving the form to the dress you know get in there with the with the darker purples and grays and, and get the get the under inners of that looking it's a little bit more detail I can't wait to get to the horse because the reins and the the harness would be really cool to do. Okay, let's see. She's got underneath his arms a little bit darker. It's kind of hard for me to see when it's that far away too. It's very small and my drawing is all gone. So I'm gonna have to make some of this up here a little bit. My pencil went away because so that happens when you're doing paintings like this. And actually, there's a background that's really dark back here because her arm stops right here and it gets like the background. Uh, yes, Sonia, this is a great paper, great gesso on regular watercolor paper. And I um, used marble dust in the gray gesso to give, make it absorbent. So, yep, that's what I'm doing today. So I'm a little different, to just trying it out. You can go back, you can also see it. You can go back and run it through again to see what I had done. This will be a little bit darker in here. And so she doesn't really have that much light on her in front here. This is pretty dark. This little girl has a little bit darker here, but then it gets a little bit lighter. Yeah. I always try to make this part also try to go fast on this part because it's not so exciting to watch, watch somebody doing detail. At least I don't think it is. <laughs> I I always always be like, oh, come on, do the big parts again. I like the big washes. See, I'm just floating pigment in there, even though you're doing, you know, a small area. It doesn't mean anytime there's wetness, anytime it's wet, don't be afraid to float pigment in there. You stick enough pigment so that it really floats to a certain point and stops. You make lines in there. 
Same thing, there's, a, there's a lines here she's got. This is getting a little bit too light or too vibrant a color. I don't want it to stick out that far. You know, gray is good in your painting. It makes your lights look and your colors look more, more vibrant. And leaving um, alone a lot of the white and leaving the white for your highlights really works well if you keep it so that like when you do this, when I do his um, little hairs on his nose and stuff, that many safe for the whites for that. So then it really shows really well by making these other parts not as light. Save your light spaces. Cause they're really in shadow, they're backlit kind of. And so I will put nice little bright um, hits of white in there and you watch how it'll just pop forward and the lighting will just glow the painting will glow all right let's get this let's get this horse done we're actually past the time now and so we're over an hour but this is a little bit more difficult of painting so i'm going to give myself a little bit more time and if you do get bored <laughs> you can always come back <laughs> you can always stop it now and come back later and finish it up. I will finish it up now. Let me put a little bit more white over here. Um, and this is kind of thick only because I want to see the, the lightest light. This is going to be the lightest light right over here. And it's pretty thick. It's almost now it's almost like an oil painting like a acrylic because I'm using a real thick right there. I want it to blend into this area. I want it to be the really bright, bright right there. And it absorbs and it really works well. Look at how neat that works. And even though it's thick, it looks, it still looks like a watercolor. All right, let's do the dark harness and let's get this thing done here. Okay, the harness is around his ear. Then it goes around his forehead. And then it goes down the side here. There's a little ring right here. Up, over. There's a little ring, which I'll put white on there, but I'll also put some dark in there. And then the two harnesses. Put um, right away, get his nose and get some darks in there too. A smile on his little mouth. Let's use a rigger brush for the long slender lines. The rigger brush holds a lot of paint with the long, long br bristles. So uh, you can go in one swipe, you can get the whole thing. One. Two. It's strong up there for me, so I, I you know I don't have to worry about that. Let's see the little girl's eyes right here, make it a little bit darker. Same thing with this little girl. A little darker for the hair again, because these are dark highlights. These I call dark highlights, and so they kind of show a particular like here or hair. And it just um, gives it that real look, you know, by making a little contrast right there. It gives the center of interest a little bit more interest. You know, don't be afraid of a nice contrast to where it's supposed to be. This is where you would put it so that those stand out. The horse needs an eye. A little bit more darks in the horse itself again because they lost some of that. I lost some of that to the not using a thick enough pigment. And so I'll just put that in there now. And it could be a tint this time. If you make it a tint, it won't look too hard edged. 
it will be a hard edge but it'll, it won't look like a hard edge because it's just slightly darker though it's picking up so it probably is best to do it wet in the wet and just re-wet it and apply it right into that all right finally i will do the highlights now i'll use pure white i will use pure white and and get some i'm just gonna take pure white and do little things that are shiny like the side of his you know you're gonna pick up these little lights from the sun and you don't make lines all the way around you make it here and there you know like on, the, on his forehead maybe on his ear because it's kind of rimlet and so the shiny um the shiny metal shiny metal piece and his little hairs his little hairs on his chinny chin chin maybe a little bit of the Maybe around her hat. It just makes it look very shiny. Like it, the sun is out, and you know it's it, you're gonna have those parts that are gonna little bracelet she has on. Rim light them in, in general. You can rim light, and again, I don't put a line all the way around them. I just pick certain spots and put a little bit there just to brighten them up in the spots. Because you make a line all around, and that actually flattens them when you do that and then you just put a, a line all the way around something you just hit it here and there but it's going to be wet or shiny in that area and top here and i am again this is pure white pure um gouache and so you know i know a lot of people don't like doing that but you'd have to use masking fluid otherwise to get this look you have to get masking fluid in there which is also okay like if you want to do it before and get that all in there that's all good it's all good also let's mix this white with a little bit of red maybe a little bit of pink because there can be some flowers in here that are also nice and bright and you notice how I will only put them in this area over here where the girls are. Because again, this is a center of interest. I don't want to have your eye go elsewhere. I, I mean, you can have a secondary interest. Let's put a little bit of that in here. Let's go some, with some lights. Scumble a little bit of light through here. Little plants that are scumbled. Take your dry brush and kind of just hit it with a little light. Nothing wrong with that. It becomes more looking like an oil, but hey, that's okay for me too. All right, I think we're pretty good here now, guys. I think we're pretty much done. So again, if you want to try this one, I made the picture bigger before. You can take it off the screen, give it a shot, try it. I have no problem with that. I have, sometimes people ask me, it's like, oh, do you mind me? To, uh, no, I, absolutely not. I don't mind one bit. Just go in there and take it and try it. That's why I'm doing these things, for you to learn and try things. And it's not a paint along because I don't, you know, I don't want to, I have one paint along on Thursday and that's the one that I use for that. But this is okay if you go ahead and do it and try it. One more thing is eye, a little highlight in his eye. A little pupil. A little nostril, a little bit darker right here. All right, I think that's it, guys. And I, there's no tape to take off because I didn't tape it down today. So have yourself a great Sunday. And. Again, we started with gray paper. Uh, for anybody that came in late, I did this first yesterday to give it a shot. And this was gray that I put down. And uh, what I used was this medium gesso. I used that gesso and I used marble dust into that. And I put that in there. 
And um, that's it. So until next Thursday, and if you don't get my newsletter, please get my newsletter. Go to my website at beckerart.net. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And that will help me out quite a bit. All right? Thanks a lot. And hit the like button. Thanks, Tina. And see everybody on...